Hi. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, I am your host, Chris Duffy, and this is Wrong Answers Only. So on today's show, you and our panel of comedians are going to learn all about exciting research from a scientific expert and also what she is like outside of the lab. Um, and before we get into the game, if you need live captioning, you can head over to the YouTube stream that was sent via Eventbrite, where it will be provided for you. Or also, that link is going to be posted in the chat momentarily. So if you need um, captioning, that is available for you. And I also want to point out that this is an interactive show, right? I wish we were all in person. But the beauty of doing this online is that we can get everyone involved. So we want to hear your jokes. We want to hear your questions. And we want you to play these games right along with us. Um, if you look to the right of your browser, right where you're watching, you should have the ability to type comments where it says Q&A. So um, you can type comments and questions there. You can put your jokes in, and we'll read them throughout the show. Also, if you click next to Q&A, you should be able to see polls. And we're going to use a few polls during the show to get you involved, too. Um, in fact, we're going to throw up a test poll right now. So click over to that test poll, and let's see your answers to that. And we'll see the results from that. As you are doing that, let me also tell you that after tonight's show, you're going to receive a post-show email with links to go deeper on our scientists' research and more comedy from each of our panelists. So you'll get to see a little bit more about everyone who you've met on tonight's show. And there's going to be a trivia question related to today's topic in that email. If you get that trivia question correct, if you respond with the correct answer, well, you can join the immortals in the wrong answers only scroll of glory. And here are the folks who nailed that question from last episode. All right. Our scroll of glory from last month, we had Andrea, we had Chris, we had Dale, Jill, and Martha. And then, not all the way there, but close, we had Doug, Ed, Elaine, Emma, Heather, Javier, Jeff, Latasha, Madi, Mary, Mike, Rick, Sheila, and Terry. Congratulations to all of those people. You were on the Wrong Answers Only Scroll of Glory. It's one of the most priceless prizes in the world um, because it is worth nothing, and yet also you can't pay for it. So you could join that illustrious list next episode. All you have to do is respond to that trivia question correctly. And uh, we also always ask for some feedback from um, the audience and some funny ideas. Last episode, we were talking about forensic science, and our expert talked all about how CSI is not very scientifically accurate. So we asked our audience to suggest new titles for CSI for the television show, and uh, some that we got were IF, inherently falsifiable. Wow, just a sick burn on CSI right there. Uh, FSDW, forensic science done wrong, another just absolute savage roasting there. And then uh, someone said in situ forensic analysis, which is, uh, I feel like, a very, very scientifically accurate description and probably would have extremely low ratings. So um, great work there. But enough about the past. Let's get into the present. Today, we have an incredible panel of comedians who are going to be playing. We have Chrissy Shackelford, Dylan Stevenson, and Kristen Bartlett. Thank you so much to our panel for being here. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. We're going to get them on screen in just a moment. Wow, leave uh, it the way it is. I like that. Yes. You know, you'll, you, <laughs> what we like to do is keep a little sense of mystery. You know, you never know what people look like in the Zoom world. So we will see you soon. Uh, I imagine that that will, will pop up in a moment. It wouldn't be a Zoom show if there wasn't a couple of uh, blank screens on there. That's kind of the secret. Um, but we are going to move right along. I think we will get your videos on screen, obviously. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to talk about today's expert, today's guest expert. And her name is Amy Parrish. I could introduce her. But rather than that, I would like to let Amy introduce herself. Here's a little video we have of Amy introducing herself. It's important to understand that we have two closest living relatives with radically different patterns of, of social behavior. And so when we think about our own evolution, we have to account for the fact that it might have been a patriarchal beginning or a matriarchal beginning, um, that gender roles are not set in stone, the females can have the upper hand, and that sexual relationships are not this kind of heterosexually focused binary model that we've often seen in the world that it's really different. My name is Amy Parrish. I'm a biological anthropologist, primatologist, and Darwinian feminist. I teach at University of Southern California, and I'm one of the world's experts on bonobo social and sexual behavior. Amy, thank you so much for being on the show and for letting us talk to you about your research and your work. 
Delighted to be here. I can't wait to share some bonobo knowledge and hear what our comedians have to say about it. Yeah, well, okay. So in our first segment, our comedians are going to ask you their first questions. We call this segment, You Do What? So panelists, you're going to get to talk much more to Amy over the course of this show, but this is your first opportunity to hear about what she does. You saw the video, you got a little taste of it. You know that she is a biological anthropologist, a primatologist, a Darwinian feminist. Who knows if you know what any of those things mean? Each of you will get your first question to ask Amy about her work. So Chrissy, what is the first question you would like to ask Amy? Okay, uh, well, my first question, and you can talk to me like I'm five years old because I uh, was never taught evolution as a child. So a lot of things are gonna be brand new. In that little <laughs> video, it looked like the male <laughs> monkeys were chimpanzees and females are bonobos. Is that uh, right? Um, no, so there were male and female <laughs> chimpanzees and male and female bonobos. Um, to, to the untrained eye, they look very similar, chimpanzees and bonobos. Bonobos are just kind of more slender. They have a different body build. Um, in, both, in both species, males are about 15% heavier than females. So there's a little bit of a size difference, but it's not extreme the way it is in, say, a gorilla or an orangutan. Okay, so one of the big differences, though, that we were that was in that animation is that um, chimpanzees have heterosexual relationships only, kind of heteronormative, and bonobos don't. Um, well, do you mean sexual relationships? <laughs> yes. Uh, well. Oh, no. also, I should have said before you answer this, I should have said if you're a parent and you're watching this with your child. We are definitely going to talk about uh, bonobo sex a lot in the show, which I think is actually fine for children. But if you don't think that's fine, then it's uh, already too late. <laughs> it's already started. So <laughs> Questions have been raised. <laughs> so in chimpanzees, almost all of their sexual interactions are between males and females. Um, fem they have a reputation for being per promiscuous, but we don't use that term anymore because it's so value laden. It just means that the person using the term thinks that you've had more sex than you should have had, but it's not quantifiable. And um, so chimpanzees have a lot of sex, but it's almost all male, female, whereas in bonobos, they have sex in all partner combinations. So males with males, females with females, males with females, um, adults with juveniles, juveniles with juveniles. So um, you see lots and lots of, um, uh, variations within their sexual repertoire. So I would say all bonobos are bisexual. Okay. And uh, I believe, if I'm not incorrect, that it is actually Bi Visibility Day. So congratulations mm -hmm. to all bonobos on, on today as well. Um, <laughs> Dylan, we've already brought up a lot. What's the first question that you would like to ask Amy? Uh, I, I also just want to know, I found that video fascinating and very informative uh, just very quickly. Have it, was there like a bonobo focus group of like said they watched have they seen the video at all like do they how do they respond to like that information like you presented I have a, a project at um the Stuttgart Zoo in southern Germany it's called the Wilhelma and that's the background behind me is um it's made from the former summer palace of King Wilhelm from the 1850s and it's really I thought beautiful. I recognized that yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> they actually have redwoods um from seeds from California that are 170 years old as well um but the bonobos there have their own video screen and they can press buttons and pick the videos that they want to watch and so I made um, a series of videos for them one is all feeding behavior one is all play one is about aggression one is a documentary about them and of course one is basically um, you know a bonobo porn reel and so um, they have their choice of which ones they like to watch and they like to watch all of them they don't seem to find it particularly arousing they have sex um, mostly for reasons like reducing tension around food or making up after a fight. So you don't see them suddenly just leap up in the middle of a nap in the afternoon and start having sex with each other. Instead, you see them um, in these very, very specific contexts having sex with each other. So the best time to see it, um, if you want to see it, is um, when they're feeding them. And there are about 200 in the world under human care. And so there aren't that many places that you can go. But you're, if you have a chance, they're definitely worth going and watching. 
It definitely felt like you had answered that question before. Like, where's the best time for me to see bonobo sex? <laughs> That's true. I think people get disappointed. They go to the zoo and, and also attention spans are very short. So I remember seeing a video when I was an undergrad that looked at um, the behavior of different groups of people in the zoo. And so Americans went straight to the gift shop, for instance. <laughs> um, and uh, People from Japan always looked through the lens of, of what they were observing. And um, so you would have to spend a little bit of time and, and invest if you want to see it. But it's well worth it. You can see females doing something called called Gigi rubbing. Well, we're going to get into all this. Let's let oh, we got to okay. save, we gotta save right. the good Spoiler. stuff for later. Okay. Uh, okay. Kristen, you have a chance to ask your first question here. My first question is how much of your day is spent watching bonobos have sex with each other? Great okay. question. Um, it depends. So I would say a typical day is I'm there with them from the time that they're led into their outdoor enclosures until they are taken back in at night. So it could be sort of a 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. kind of day often. And that allows me to see the sexual behavior, lots of grooming, lots of playing, lots of napping. For, unfortunately, I don't get to nap at the same time because I have to stay awake in case they do anything interesting during that time. But um, it's it's really a privilege to have studied them for almost 30 years. Well, we're going to get uh, into more a lot. We're going to talk about all this in more depth. But first, I want to uh, just say that the chat is just absolutely exploding. A lot of people saying that they relate to these bonobos. A lot of people saying sex, food, naps, that is them. Uh, I will. I want to package two of the questions that people got. One person asked, where can I buy the bonobo porn video? And then another person asked, what is a Darwinian feminist? So um, let's actually start with what is a Darwinian feminist? All right. So um, in biology, we ask questions about who has power, how do you get it, what is it good for, and those are the same questions that feminists are asking. And so the two disciplines, gender studies and anthropology, are actually have common interests and are asking some of the same questions, but tend not to talk to each other. And so there was a group of um, feminist biologists who realized that they had these interests in common and started a group of um, people who identified as Darwinian feminists to, to try to bring those disciplines together. And it's been really fruitful um, to, to have those colleagues and that solidarity. The bonobos in particular are a great model because they really embody the goals of the human feminist movement, which is behave with unrelated females as if they are your sisters and you can have more power. That's that's the sisterhood, right? So um, bonobos give us hope for the human race. That's incredible. Well, uh, I want to let's, I feel like we're going to move from such a, a highly aspirational uh, intellectual moment to such a, a incredibly uh, low brow culture, but you know what, let's do it. Our next game is uh, called reality or research. And in this game, I'm going to give our panelists a description of an event, and they're going to have to tell me if this is from a moment that you've actually studied with Bonobos or a reality TV show. So uh, first one, Chrissy, we're going to get started with you. Is this from reality TV or research? A mom sets up a sex date for her adult male child. Is that from a reality TV show or Amy's research? Well, that's literally the plot of the MTV reality show Date My Mom. <laughs> okay, but I thought that was the moms getting set up, not the moms setting their children up. Oh, you're right. I guess I always was like hoping that <laughs> the mom would just go away and everyone else would have sex with each other. <laughs> I might be wrong. That might actually be the, the true uh, description of the show. The way it is, they date the mom so that you can get a sense of if you want to date the daughter or the son. That's right, that's right. So okay. I'm gonna stick with reality television. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? The answer is it's both. It is Date My Mom and also Amy's research. Amy, in your research, you discovered that one of the most attractive qualities that a bonobo male can have, someone asked, is there like a bonobo type? Like, is there like an attractive bonobo movie star? And the answer, as I understand it, that you told me ahead of time is that having a powerful mom that is the most attractive quality a bonobo male can have. Well, definitely it's very advantageous to have your mom around. So we talk pejoratively about mama's boys, but in reality for bonobos, the most important asset he has in his life is a high ranking mother. And we know that because when the mother eventually dies, that male who was formerly high ranking then falls in rank. So we know that his rank is dependent on his mom's rank. And what he gets out of that is she intervenes in fights and um, 
the two moms will rush in and whoever has the higher ranking mom usually wins the fight. And then he also gets invited into exclusive female feeding circles and he gets to have sex with the mother's friends. And so there's a lot of perks to being the son of a high ranking female. Um, there's a lot. My, so before someone had already asked if they could see the bonobo sex videos. And um, now there's a lot more people asking if they can see the bonobo. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, it's hmm. much more. I sense a side career. <laughs> yes. The chat is, is very interested in your film work. Um, okay. Next one. And also wait, one thing about this too, that's interesting is so we often hear about chimpanzees as being our closest relatives, but bonobos, they're just as close to us. And, uh, Bonobos are matriarchal as and as opposed to chimpanzees with our, which are patriarchal. So there, there is kind of like a sexism even in what we think of as our closest relative. That's right. For the longest time, we only had chimps to build our models of human evolution. And um, so they were all based on patriarchy and male bonding and sexual coercion and hunting and meat eating. And the bonobos were discovered much later. But when we did... Um, research on them, one of my big discoveries was that it's a society where females dominate males. And so that opens up the possibilities for how we model our own evolution. We're equally closely related to both of them. We share a common ancestor six million years ago. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like it's so, you know, there is a type of person that's always like, well, this is just nature. This is natural. That's how it is. And your research proves that that is absolutely not the case. That's right. It is not set in stone. Um, we inherited good and bad qualities from both of our closest living relatives. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's go to our second question in this game. Uh, Dylan, this is for you. Is this from reality TV or Amy's research? A mother gives birth by pulling out her own baby while an audience watches. Can I see that picture one more time? Absolutely, you can. <laughs> I will say this is not a photograph. This is an illustration. Oh, thank you for explaining that. <laughs> um, I mean, I know very little about reality TV. But yeah, I feel like I would have heard of that I show. Think. That's enough of this. Oh, yeah, you can take that down. I feel like I would have heard of that show. So I'm going to go research. Actually, that is Kourtney Kardashian on Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and she did do that twice. She did do that twice, both babies. I, I don't I don't keep up with the Kardashians. No, apparently not. I will also say we tweeted about this earlier to promote the show, like tweeted, yeah, is this the research or is this from reality? And Amy sent me a nervous email being like, I don't remember the time when Bonobos did this. Can you just like make sure that I am able to talk about this? And I was like, that is because it is not a Bonobo. It is a Kardashian. So I am not um, Kardashian literate. Yes, Sorry. unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Come on. We're busy. We're busy learning about Bonobos, you know. Um, Chris, I have a question regarding um, bringing a baby out of your body. Absolutely, yes. In the Keaton Kardashians episodes where that happened, who cut the cord? I absolutely do not know. I do not know. I would assume. Uh, I would assume it was like an uh, like a lucky viewer. <laughs> they, they oh like yeah, because prize. Keeping Up with the Kardashians is filmed in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> That's right. Yes, it was a studio audience. The warm up comment came down and, and cut the cord. <laughs> these, are these Courtney's babies? Did you say Courtney? Courtney. That's right. But it would have yeah. been Scott. Would have been Scott. <laughs> Chrissy, is that correct? Great. I will say I gave a talk at the Adelaide Festival of Ideas and in the program book, it said it was World Vasectomy Day and they were going to be, um, uh, there was a, a session you could go to where they would be filming live vasectomies performed on stage. And who hasn't watched that before? You know, so I went, I thought that can't really be what they mean, but they did mean it. And so they had a, a whole audience there watching men who volunteered to get vasectomies. And the point was to show how how easy and, and painless the procedure is. The only weird part is when they cut the vas deferens, they cauterize the two ends and the smoke goes out in the audience. And so you sit there thinking about how you're breathing in cauterized vas deferens. Oh, well, shit. That is magic show. That is absolutely wild. <laughs> Amy, I did not. I thought that we'd covered everything in the pre-interview. The fact that you just pulled that anecdote out of nowhere as something you didn't even think to talk about. I love that. Absolutely incredible. Like Kristen said, a magic show involving smoke from the human body live on stage in Australia. There you go. I would just love to see how they do an encore, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Okay, well, uh, Kristen, let's go to you. Last situation in this. One of the ladies in the house recognizes a woman she used to know and makes a big deal out of giving her a gift, but that gift turns out to be her own poop. Now, is that from a reality show or is that Amy's research? Okay, so it's from the movie The Help and also <laughs> I'm guessing Amy's research, right? I don't know if it is also from a reality show, but it's certainly from Amy's research. Amy, you were once recognized by a bonobo who had seen you years before, and she handed you a gift of her poop. Now, will you tell us that story? So I used to collect fecal samples from the females so that I could look at estrogen and progesterone profiles and figure out when they were ovulating. And so in um, San Diego, the females would give me the samples, and Loretta's daughter, Lena, was hanging around and watching that, but was too young to be cycling herself. So I never collected samples on her. She had been transferred to the zoo in Stuttgart and about, I don't know, three or five years had gone by. So she's on a different continent. A long time has gone by. I never collected on her to begin with. And as soon as she saw me, she went away and got a fecal sample and brought it back. So she thought, Oh, you're that woman who likes to have the fecal samples. I, I thought that, that was really nice. <laughs> well, that made me emotional. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I, I love that we've all universally agreed that that is a touching story. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm just going to go with that. You think that's emotionally touching? We'll, we'll say yes to that. <laughs> um, okay, um, we're going to go into our next game. But before that, um, Amy, I'm going to ask you just a couple questions from the audience. These are yes or no, okay? okay. Yes or no. Um, do um, do we know why bonobos became matriarchal? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll get into that later. <laughs> have you ever made bonobos watch Friends while they have sex? I, and this was capitalized, so I believe it's the TV show Friends. <laughs> no. No. Okay. And would you say human sexual behavior would more copy bonobo behavior if it wasn't for societal restraints? Do you think we're just societally um, held back? Yes. All right, great. We're going to talk more about all of those. But first, you have even brought up some of the bonobo sexual behaviors that you've studied. I gave these phrases without any context to our panelists ahead of time, and we're going to look at what they came up with in a game that is called Pretty Hard to Draw. Okay, so this is the PhD of our show, PhD, Pretty Hard to Draw. Um, I gave them just a phrase, and they had to draw it. Um, Kristen, you had the phrase rump, rump, rubbing. Will you please draw us what you uh, made for rump, rump, rubbing? Okay. <laughs> so this is what I drew. Um, oh, let me like get them exactly right. So it's yes. two bonobos rubbing rumps. That's what I think that this is. Amy, how, how correct is that? Well, um, so bonobos are apes, not monkeys, so they wouldn't have tails. But otherwise, oh, no. it looks uh, it looks pretty <laughs> similar. So, um, rump rump rubbing is usually done by males. They stand uh, quadrupedally, so on all fours, um, end to end, and they rub their scrotums together. So, I don't think you got into all of the details in your drawing, but um, otherwise, yeah, I would say it more or less you know, cap captures it. Females can also yeah. stand end to end and rub their um, genital swellings together, but it's more behavior that's associated with um, males. Okay, so Kristen, I'd say very good work. Um, our notes for you are fewer tails, more scrotums. That's all we want in your art next time. That's okay? good. Though. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, also, someone in the chat says that uh, rump rump rubbing sounds like a great R&B song. And um, I'm not sure that I agree. So uh, let's go to Dylan. Dylan, you had to draw a variation on rump rump rubbing, which is called GG rubbing. Um, can we see your drawing of GG rubbing? Uh, well, I, it doesn't, I don't think it's accurate. Uh, this is a We're gonna need you get named, that closer to the camera here. This is a fellow named Gigi Rubin. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, he's a shady individual, runs like a real weird carnival, uh, you know, where they try to guess how much debt you got, you know, ask for your social security number. Uh, <laughs> You know, they, maybe they got some bonobos on the premises that they shouldn't have, you know? Now, he is wearing very small sunglasses, if I believe. Correct. Yeah. 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 And he's smoking a quite a quite a smoky cigarette. I mean, I did what I could, man. I'm not a... I'm not a <laughs> oh, crazy. no, I just want to <laughs> confirm. Amy, what do you think? Is that, does that does that track with Gigi Rubin? Well, first of all, is that a man named Gigi Rubin? <laughs> well, um, perhaps. No, in you, bonobos. Can't, you can't say no. 
<laughs> okay. I would probably say no. Um, so GG rubbing stands for genital genital rubbing. In bonobos, <sighs> females have huge genital swellings. Um, in chimps, uh, that females also have those swellings and the closer that a female chimp gets to ovulation, the bigger the swelling becomes. In bonobos, the females have those swellings for a big part of their cycle. And um, often it's one of the most frequent things that, that zoo visitors comment on. So they usually come up and they say, what's wrong with those monkeys? Which of course, they're not monkeys. And also there's nothing wrong with them. Males consider those swellings to be a really beautiful thing. And What's um, wrong with those monkeys? There's nothing wrong with them. <laughs> they're not monkeys and it's beautiful. How dare you? <laughs> well, the best was this pair of seven-year-old boys came up and they were having this conversation and one said to the other with great authority, I know what that is. This was in Germany. So he was speaking German. He said, Das ist eine angebote Sitzkissen, which means that it's a built-in seat cushion, which is a really great hypothesis. Science is all about hypotheses. Uh, so he generated that hypothesis. It's not true because they actually can't sit on them. They hang them off of the side of things when they're sitting. So they're quite cumbersome, but Absolutely. in bonobos, they're really big. And the clitoris in, in the bonobo is quite prominent. And clitorises are made from the same tissue and they have the same structure as a penis. So they can become erect. And they rub their swellings back and forth in this rapid sideways motion. And uh, they seem to derive a lot of pleasure from it. They squeal, they clench their hands and feet, they grimace. Um, so it, it gives a lot of signals that they're probably having orgasms from their GG rubbing. And I did not draw that. I will confirm. That is not what I drew. But I would say... G, the man you drew, Gigi Rubbins, I feel like he would be very into everything we just heard about. Yeah, he's a also, weirdo. I have to say, Dylan, if you'd drawn if you'd drawn everything we just heard about, and then it turned out it wasn't that, that would have been an awkward drawing to have to explain. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, you know, I'm I'm okay with having a wrong answer on this one. Wow, yes. this show works perfectly. Perfect, perfect. There. Um, also, would anyone anyone care to, to say anything else about what we just heard? That it's fine if not, but if so, you are welcome to jump in. It's beautiful, Chris. Yeah, it's beautiful. I was not saying it's not beautiful. I think that everything we heard is beautiful, and I love it. Uh, okay, we're going to move uh, right along to uh, Chrissy. We had you draw penis fencing, probably one of the most famous behaviors of the bonobos. Uh, can you please show us what you came up with for penis fencing? Yes. So um, I just want to preface this by saying I think I nailed it. <laughs> okay. Okay. There we go. Uh, um, white picket penis fences. <laughs> Amy, is that correct? That's how you actually keep the bonobos in their cages? <laughs> that is not correct. Um, in terms of the physiology or, yeah, well, the, right. the, the physique of a bonobo, the penises kind of look like carrots. They're very long and thin. They don't have, they don't have the same kind of structure as a yeah, not, not quite like that. They don't have that kind of girth. They're more pointy towards the top um, and longer. Uh, so a different structure. And they have enormous testes relative to body size because <laughs> females mate with all the males in the group. And so males, in order to compete to get the fertilization, um, they have really, really high ejaculate counts, which which require large testes. And so usually testes correlates with body size. So they're huge in both chimps and bonobos because females mate with lots of males. They're very small in gorillas because gorillas hold harems of females and it's hard for the female to mate with anyone else. In humans, the testes are halfway in between those two extremes. So you can draw your own conclusions about that. Um, I would love to just um, do a real quick check-in with the panel. When I asked you, hey, would you like to do a comedy show with the National Academy of Sciences? How is this tracking with what you expected we would be discussing? Well, I, I had already drawn yeah. this before you even <laughs> okay, My thing was. So it's pretty on track with what I expected. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. And that, that's a sturdy so fence, by the way, too. Let me just say that's, that's yes, a that's a very sturdy fence. fence. <laughs> so the penis fencing is actually when males um, suspend off of branches facing each other, and they rub their erections back and forth against each other in sideways motion, similar to the GG rubbing, but with erect penises and usually suspended out of trees. 
Are and they doing that for pleasure? Does it seem like they get pleasure out of it? It does. That although I, usually with that kind of behavior, I don't see males ejaculate. And that may be because they need to save ejaculations for the sperm competition um, in mating with females. They're edging. Yeah. <laughs> it absolutely seems correct. Uh, I'll, uh, just uh, some reactions from the chat. We're hearing... Um, Someone is saying, I want to see Dylan's new drawing tomorrow. Many people are agreeing that Chrissy's fence looks like a fence they would like at their house. And uh, someone is saying that Gigi Rubbins is now going to show up in their Tinder profile. So uh, great, we have that. Um, OK. Oh, the other Gigi Rubbins, probably. <laughs> well, either way. <laughs> um, well, that was pretty hard to draw. And um, it is important to note that not all of Amy's research is just watching bonobos go to town on each other. A lot of it is, but not all of it. So in our next segment, we're going to see some of the more buttoned up parts of her job. Uh, and this is a game that we call fully suitable for work photos. Okay, so um, in this segment, panelists, I'm going to show you each a photo, and then we're going to guess what's happening in it. And audience, please put your um, guesses in the chat as well. But first, um, this is a very important question. Are bonobos endangered? Someone is asking that. They are highly endangered. So we don't actually know how many are left. They only live in one country, the former Zaire, now called Democratic Republic of Congo. And it's very hard to do census work there. We suspect there are less than 10,000 left. Unfortunately, they're hunted and eaten for meat. Um, mostly as a high status item, it's called the bushmeat trade. And so it's not necessarily subsistence eating, but more for, for status. Um, and unfortunately, the areas where they live are mined for a mineral that we use in our cell phones and our laptops. That mineral is called coltan. And so we, what we could do in this country is we could lobby tech firms to find an alternative to coltan and ways to recycle coltan. We can all hang on to our cell phones longer. We don't necessarily need the latest version right away. Um, and that would decrease the pressure on um, the community, the, the territories where the bonobos live and other apes as well. Okay. Well, let's, let's look at some of these photos from your work, Amy, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, Dylan, why don't you tell us what you think is going on in this first photo? Okay. Um, and we can actually zoom in too. What do you think's happening here, Dylan? You know, it's just after a long day, uh, having gender roles that are more equal than than other cultures or peoples, just looking out at the sunset and thinking about what what tomorrow is going to bring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dylan sounds like it almost felt like there was like a personal connection to that there. Yeah, maybe. Also, it made it sound like living in a society where gender roles were more equal was like really it seemed exhausting to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Something to be pursued. Um, Amy, what is happening in this photo? Is it is it a, a bonobo coming to terms with the fact that gender roles are more equal and maybe he's not okay with that? <laughs> so that's Bonbo. She's a female bonobo in the okay. zoo in Stuttgart. She's watching the video screen that I mentioned. It's actually her baby who has pressed the button. And that's something I only picked up later when I was um, looking at the videos in slow motion. And I actually saw the, if you go back to the photo, you can see that she has a baby on her belly. You can see um, a little bit of the hands around, um, uh, around Bonbo's waist. And um, so... They, she's watching the nature documentary actually there. So that's a, a sunset in Democratic Republic of Congo. And, and there's a scene in there that's that tranquil scene. And this is from your study where they can basically control the TVs. They, they have a choice to watch whatever channel they want. So she chose a peaceful sunset with her, with her child. And they all just end up watching The Office. <laughs> <laughs> they are so much like us. They are instant couch potatoes. They bring snacks. They have their favorite places to sit. The highest ranking female gets the best spot to sit every time. Uh, there's a male who brings all kinds of nest building material and he makes kind of like an armchair and he sits in that man spreading position with his knees way out uh, and his elbow. I mean, he just needs, you know, a can of a can of beer. And I mean, it, it could be a human. Um, <laughs> Dylan so. is literally in an armchair right now uh, and we can't see his bottom, but I'd feel confident it's a man spread right now. <laughs> so I, need, I need some beer. Uh, also, don't don't let them fall down like the wrong like YouTube holes, you know, just like. 
Yeah. That algorithm. Yeah. We, we'll send you down the last thing we want is bonobos to become radicalized. We yeah, have yeah, to yeah. prevent that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I absolutely agree with Chrissy. A huge amount of Steve Carell's residuals right now are coming from zoos right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go to uh, a photo for Chrissy, actually. Chrissy, what is happening in this photo? Uh, here's another photo. And we actually can zoom in as well. What do you think's happening here? Oh my gosh, Amy just got back from Radio Shack. <laughs> this was a big day. Um, the nearest yes. Radio Shack was closing down, having like a, what they call those fire sale, who knows. Mm -hmm. um, and she was supposed to work. She was supposed to go hang out and watch the bonobos have sex. But instead she was like, I got all these gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing that you actually know that that's from Radio Shack. So that is a laptop <laughs> from Radio Shack from 1989. And We're going to say that's correct. We're going to give that a correct for sure. Wow. Oh my wow. Gosh. Now keep explaining, Amy, though. Keep explaining. So that's a small, um, a small laptop that a friend of mine, Karen Forney, was able to program for me so that I could use a barcode scanning pen. And then I had um, barcodes for each of the bonobo behaviors, every individual, a barcode that told the computer to start time or stop time so that I could collect all of my data using a barcode scanning system, which saved me a lot of time. But I also have a, and then I put it on an artist um, fiber board and Velcroed it on. And I have a tape recorder there that's also Velcroed on and a stopwatch and binoculars. And then um, if anything was happening too fast to record, I could switch to tape. Um, those take a long time to transcribe later, but I saved so much time with this barcode scoring system. So I had a barcode for each of the individuals, Vernon and Victor and Kayland and Akili and Loretta and Lana and Lolita, et cetera. And then um, I had a barcode for every behavior. So face-to-face um, -face sex, um, what we call ventral dorsal sex, where one individual is behind the other, um, sex in the context of food, sex in the context of aggression, play chase, play wrestle, those kinds of things. And so it, it allowed me to collect all of the data really easily. Um, Kristen, it felt like I, I felt like I saw you had a, had a moment there where you wanted to say something. Well, I just think I, I, I'm back to the sex with aggression, I guess. You know, I feel like I'm coming back to you. these bonobos. Like, I feel like there's a thin line between love and hate. And that's what's happening, too. So I don't know. I'm just thinking about their emotional life right now. I did see one time two females, they were fighting, and that's rare for females to have contact aggression, but they were fighting with each other. And then they started having sex with each other while they were still fighting. So the fight hadn't yet been resolved and they were already GG rubbing. And that was really amazing. They were just kind of rolling around and GG rubbing and screaming and you know, canines bared and all of that stuff. And that, that was really, really interesting. Um, but I mean, we have that term makeup sex, right? In yeah. humans as well. And so um, it's part of our behavioral repertoire too, to use sex for tension reduction. Does, does the barcode for that say sex for tension reduction or makeup sex? Um, it says it asks for the context. And so I can say that a fight was going on or that food was just introduced or that, um, Maybe there was aggression with another individual, and so they're um, forming an alliance through the sex that they're having with each other, coalition. So one could be backing up another individual. I just absolutely love that your research is like a perfect combination of hard science and getting data, uh, porn videos, and uh, the self-checkout at a CVS, where you're just like scanning the barcodes. <laughs> it's incredible. I also just want to highlight that I think the term face-to-face -face sex is so much better than missionary. <laughs> Supposedly, and I don't know if this is actually true, but I've heard researchers say that that term missionary style um, came from missionaries who went to study so-called savages and to convert them and believed that only animals... Um, uh, the, that what would distinguish us from other animals was having sex face to face, that we were the only ones who did that. Um, and it turns out bonobos, about 25% of their populations are in that face to face position. And in the meantime, there's some beautiful photos of um, gorillas in the wild copulating face to face. And occasionally it's seen in orangutans. So, I mean, we are an animal, just like all the other ones in the animal kingdom. Linnaeus put us there. And in the 1700s. So this shouldn't really be shocking, but it's really amazing how many Americans would argue that we're not an animal. 
One of one of many things that a missionary could have discovered on their travels that would absolutely shock them to the core about their beliefs. <laughs> These bonobos are doing it like humans. Oh my God. You know, there's a wonderful story um, about the Archbishop of Paris and the first time he ever saw a chimpanzee that was brought to France, he looked at it and he said, speak and I will baptize you. And, you know, he was so struck by how human-like the chimp was. <laughs> and so I think that's one of the reasons why we're sometimes uncomfortable with some of the things that chimps and bonobos do, because it is such a reflection. Um, it's that like looking in a mirror. <laughs> speak and I will baptize you. speak. <laughs> That's really good. Okay, uh, great. Uh, I wish that that story ended with it being two bonobos and they were like, we can't speak, but have you ever seen Gigi Robin? And then they just went to town. Uh, hello, Archbishop. Well, that story uh, ended where it needed to. Yes, absolutely. Okay, well, we are off track in this game. So we have one more photo. Kristen, what is happening in this photo? And we'll let's zoom in on this one as well. Well, Kristen, what do you think is happening? <laughs> I think that this is, I think that you pulled an all-nighter. Like this looks like you had to study and this was like a long, long night and you were getting a really intense test in the morning about how bonobos make love. <laughs> close, very, very close. I think this is the, you know, anybody who's been to grad school will recognize a picture like that. It wasn't just one night, unfortunately. <laughs> there were so many all-nighters and just, you know, so many years of being surrounded by, by papers and articles and sifting through them and just trying to, um, to piece together, you know, an explanation for, um, for a new phenomenon. And so, um, yeah, that was my life for about six and a half years. I feel like if you ever released like a moody kind of indie rock music album, that could be an incredible cover for that, for sure. Yeah. It definitely feels like it's like a you have a Phoebe Bridgers cover on there, or maybe, you know, you have uh, some like maybe an Alanis cover even. I could see that. <laughs> um, anyway, that's just, you know, just spitballing for a future career for you. I was 100% uh, hoping that a bonobo took that photo, like just <laughs> caught you in a candid moment. <laughs> Um, well, you know what? Let's actually find out more about, about Amy herself. So we know a lot about her research now. Let's learn more about her as a person in a game of two truths and a lie. So uh, panelists, I'm going to give you three statements about Amy. Two are true. One is a lie. You know how the game works. Uh, you're going to have to guess which is which. You're going to talk about it together, and then we'll come to consensus on which you think is the lie. So here are the facts. Amy lives in a German zoo. There is a very famous bonobo named after Amy's son. Amy used to perform ballet and modern dance. Which of those is the lie? What do you think, panelists? Does she live in a German zoo? Does, is there a bonobo named after her son? Or is there is it that she used to perform ballet and modern dance? Which of those is not true? We know she hangs out in a German zoo, but we don't know if she lives there. So that's like something to think about. I think there's one, I think a bonobo being named after her son feels so true to me. Yeah. Also the dance, that seems real to me. Yeah. You have that spirit. You have that grace. 100%. Um, Dylan? I, I feel like you'd have to be in a zoo a lot to hear the, 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 the seat, the natural seat cushion kind of line, <laughs> like that kind of dialogue. Mm. But I do agree. I do agree that the son feels very true. But you know, I could see I could see some dancing. So basically, I'm not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you got to make a choice. Which do you think is the lie? I would vote for living at the zoo. What do you guys think? Oh, let's go down the line. Kristen says living at the zoo. Dylan, which one do you think is the lie? I'm not. I'm not I think it's living at the zoo. We we, we answer as a team. You told us. <laughs> well, you don't have to answer as a team, Chrissy. Like, do you want to do you want to give the same? I think the dance is a lie. Okay, we got two zoos and one dance. Let's find out what is the lie. <gasps> there is not a very famous bonobo named after Amy's son. In fact, in fact, there is a son named after a famous bonobo. Amy oh, named her son me. after the bonobo, not the other way around. Of course. Of course. <laughs> question. Are we all wrong? Okay, 100% so wrong. Now, uh, Amy, you don't live full time at the zoo, but you do have an apartment at the zoo that you can use. 
there's a guest room in the former summer palace of King Wilhelm, and I get to live there and spend my time commuting with the animals. Former and, summer palace. And, of course you can live on the premises. <laughs> but also sneaky phrasing. Okay, full time is the implied. So, hey. This is true. Okay, we'll give you we'll give you the no sneaky for sure. <laughs> I wish um, I could be full time. That would be amazing. And uh, talk to me about your uh, your son. So when my son, before my son was born, we were thinking of, you know, different names. And um, the first bonobo that I ever met was um, one of the ones that I was closest to. We were really just um, really, really fond of each other. And I thought that we name, uh, we name apes after people all of the time. And why to reverse that and people after apes. And so I gave my son the same name as the bonobo. His name is Kayland, which is a combination of his parents' names, Kakawit and Linda. Kakawit was a de de derived from a, S a Swahili word, and Linda was the mother, so they made the name Kayland, and so my son is the second Kayland. Um, his German grandparents, the Germans will say, oh, is that an American name? And they'll say, we don't know, but they do know. <laughs> they know his name for Ipanova. They just don't want to get into it. <laughs> and, uh, have your son and the bonobo that he's named after met? I think they did meet, yeah, when, when my son was young. And certainly my son has met a lot of Kaylin's uh, siblings, his, his uh, sister Loretta and Louise and, yeah, Lana. Um, well, we're coming very close to the end of the show. So uh, one more question from the, uh, the audience is, what do bonobos eat? And then panelists, if you have any other questions you're dying to get in, please, this is the time. All right. So both bonobos and chimpanzees love to eat fruit. They both also eat some meat. Chimpanzees are voracious monkey hunters, and they particularly love to eat red colobus monkeys, although they'll eat other kinds of monkeys and occasionally have eaten, you know, a human offspring, a, a human child as well. Um, but, you know, that that's rare. We eat far more of them than they do of us, which is what I like to say to my students when they react in horror to hearing about Frodo, the chimpanzee and Jenkinal's field site who ate a human baby. Um, bonobos don't, apparently don't eat monkeys, but they really like to eat um, a, a forest antelope called the diker. They don't eat that as much. Um, both, both, I would say, eat a lot of fruit. And then bonobos also eat um, what we call terrestrial herbaceous vegetation. So ground vines and things like that. And having that, um, that broader diet that they're willing to eat the vegetation allows them to live in bigger groups where they're not always competing over food the way that chimpanzees are. And that gives females um, an opportunity to bond because they can hang out with each other without as intense food competition. Okay. Uh, one, uh, one other, just a yes or no question from uh, the audience. Uh, does, do the bonobos ever show attraction to you? I would say yes, um, that bonobos will invite a lot of different species for sexual interactions. Um, so bonobos have a gesture for that where they extend their arm and they they wiggle the end of their fingers. Okay, you got, you got to see that. We got to see the gesture. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you do it to the camera here? Yeah. Yeah, what's that gesture? What's the... It's sort of like this, a little lower. Yeah, like that. And um, Or they'll do this arm around thing where they walk up to some, and they haven't done that to me because yeah. I'm not in the enclosure with them, but um, and they kind of like scoop the individual around. So Genuinely seen middle face. school boys do both of these gestures towards each other. This is 100%. <laughs> so, but, you know, bonobos aren't alone in that. If you go if you go swimming with dolphins, I mean, there's a pretty high chance that one of the dolphins is going to, you know, come up and rub on you in some kind of sexual way. So you should be prepared for that. I, I wasn't, and now I, I will be. I really will be. Um, okay, any last questions from the panel before we get uh, into the, the final parts of the show? It's okay if you don't have one. Uh, I've been taken on an emotional ride today. Uh, did not expect that. So, uh, no, I'm kind of confounded still. All right, I think, that's, I think we're good then. So let's now come into the end of the show, which is we're going to check in on the scores. It looks like Dylan... And Kristen had the least points, and Chrissy had the most points, which means that Dylan and Kristen won because the show is wrong answers only. So good job. You both lost, and by losing, you won. Chrissy, next time, do worse. Uh, or if you want to look at it the other way, you won, and you lost the prize, which is no prize. So uh, either way, everyone's a winner, and also everyone's a loser. 
Now, before we really wrap up, Amy, will you tell us the biggest thing that you hope everyone who is watching the show takes away? What do you hope that everyone takes away from tonight? I think that bonobos are an incredible model for us of how we can get back to some roots where um, the sexes are, um, well, how can I say this? I, I, well, what I think is really exciting about bonobos is because they're a female dominant species, we can see um, how females can cooperate with each other and therefore have more power. And so there's less disparity between the sexes. And so for me, it's really exciting to study them in their own right, but they're also really amazing in terms of what they've been able to accomplish among unrelated females. So you can think of a lot of female species where um, it seems like females have a lot of power, but that's because they're related to each other. The really special thing about bonobos is they do that in the absence of kinship. And since a lot of human females don't live with their relatives, it gives a lot of hope that we could also, you know, really live that, that motto of the human feminist movement, behave with unrelated females as if they are your sisters. And now that we know bonobos can do it, we can try to do the same. That's beautiful. And panelists, that is what Amy hopes you take away from today's show. What will you actually be taking away? Dylan, what will you be taking away from today's show? Uh, but that you know, they got YouTube, and that you know, if I, if I get the right content up there, I might have a whole new fan base. You know, I'm gonna start, Dylan, start Dylan. you know, targeting some of this comedy. Thinking about diversifying his stand up comedy videos into the Bonobo Zoo uh, movement. Okay, Chrissy, what are you gonna take away? I think I'm gonna take away that they just love their bodies. Like, even if you know, this penis fencing thing where the males are just rubbing them, they're just like playful. They're just playful with their bodies, it seems like. I think that's really inspiring. I totally agree. And Kristen, what are you going to take away from today? Penis long like a carrot. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much to all three of you for playing. And if you are in the uh, thank you so much, Amy, for, for being here. Uh, if you are in the audience, you are going to get an email after tonight's show with bonus information from our expert, Amy, and links to get deeper into her findings. You're going to get some great jokes and comedy videos from each of our panelists. There are three of them are, as you can already see, tell, hilarious and amazing. And of course, you're also going to get that trivia question, which could get your name onto our scroll of glory. We would also love to hear any feedback from you about the show. In fact, we have a poll that is going right now where you can rate the show. Um, we would love to get your information, get your honest rating so that we can make this uh, better or uh, keep it great. Whatever you want, tell us. We'd love that feedback. And that is our show for tonight. We will be back next month on Thursday, October 21st for something a little spooky. We have a Halloween themed episode where we're going to talk to a neuroscientist who uses her research to create a scientifically accurate haunted house in the suburbs of Boston and terrifies young children. Now, if you don't want to hear more about that, I honestly don't. I don't know what to tell you. You got to hear more about that. In the meantime, thank you so much to tonight's scientist, Amy Parrish. Thank you to our panelists, Christy Shackelford, Dylan Stevenson, and Kristen Bartlett. A special thank you to La Jolla Country Day School and USC, both establishments that support Amy and her work. Thanks as well to everyone at the National Academy of Sciences and LabX and our back-end folks, the tech team making this happen. Jesse, Dempsey, Amechi, Mario, Jose, and everyone else on the tech team. I am your host, Chris Duffy, and this has been Wrong Answers Only. You can find out more about this show and register for next month's show at labx.org slash WAO. Have a great night. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.